from Roman Catholic to Christian, how I came to know the real Jesus Christ today. I'm going to uh, share my testimony, how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I was born all the way back in 1952 in Queens, New York. Uh, my family moved out to Long Island a few years later, then they returned, moved back to Queens. Uh, but growing up, you know, I was able to go to what is called a religious instruction in the local Catholic church um, on Long Island. You know, later on, I ended up going to a Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. Uh, but I learned, this is where I learned a lot of the things when I was younger in that religious in, uh, instruction at the local Catholic church. And um, you would learn about mortal sin, venial sin, and all of these things. And I remember learning as a young man, and I used to, you know, think to myself, how can you keep up with all of this stuff? How do you know it's venial? How do you know it's mortal sin? And it was a lot of bondage. And um, you know, it was a mortal sin if you miss Mass on Sunday. You know, and I had already done that. And I said, man, I'm shot, <laughs> you know. So even growing up to, during that time, you know, uh, there was enough conviction in my uh, own heart. Uh, you know, even purgatory seemed like a long shot for me. You know, you'd be reading all of these uh, basically rules and regulations. So, as I said, it's like a lot of bondage. Uh, you know, you went through your sacraments. I remember First Communion, uh, Confirmation, and stuff like that. In fact, I remember the First Communion. The only thing uh, I seemed concerned about was how, many, how much money I was going to get when people... Uh, mail you a, a card or something, you know. I remember there was a few people, uh, we, we we compared how much money we made. I, I was the low man with 13 bucks, and the, the, the most somebody got was $64. But anyway, this was, this is stuff kids do. But I remember, you know, uh, growing up, there would always be a question, a nagging question in the back of my mind, you know, where would I go after I die? Where Where, where am I going? You know, I, I, there was enough. I, I knew I knew about heaven. I knew about hell. And of course, growing up as a Catholic, um, we were taught purgatory. But uh, you, you always wondered, so what happens to me? You know, what happens uh, after you die? So anyway, many years later, during the 1970s, you know, I had this insatiable desire to know the truth, you know. It just wouldn't go away. It was a nagging in my heart. I, I just had a desire to search the truth. And I remember there was a shopping mall out on Long Island, Roosevelt Field Shopping uh, Mall, and there was a couple of bookstores in the mall that I would visit. You know, if I had a couple of extra bucks, uh, I'd go out there and, you know, if there was some uh, book that interested me, I would buy that book, or several books sometimes. And uh, But I would spend a lot of time out there. I remember going to those philosophy sections, religious sections, spirituality, all of that stuff. And I would go from shelf to shelf, uh, up and down, looking through those books. I can, I can just see myself, you know, doing it uh, again. And, and, and I, then I go to the reverse side of that uh, bookcase. Then I would go to the next section and do the exact same thing. I had a lot of time on my hands, you know, when I would go out there. So I, I didn't care. I just wanted to, I wanted the truth. So if I found something, I would buy it. So I eventually filled a, a huge box <laughs> with books on all sorts of topics. You know, I can remember some of the books that I uh, bought and there was a book in 1976 uh, that came out, uh, I think it was called Your Erroneous Zones by Dr. Wayne Dyer. I, I found that book very interesting. Uh, a Man's Search for Meaning, I think it was by Viktor Frankl. Um, that book, I'm okay, you're okay. Uh, you know, I realized later later on after I got saved, I, I used to joke, I says, I'm not okay and you're not okay. Uh, you know, but when you're searching for the truth, all of this stuff interested me. And um, I was living behind a, a store uh, in, uh, just on the Queens um, Long Island border in Floral Park. There was a, a store that me and a, a co-worker, we, we shared the rent. It was only $105 uh, a month. You know, it was actually right, right be, was in, be, in, behind the storefront. In fact, there was a, a supermarket next door. And when they would deliver um, the groceries there on Monday, the big truck would pull up. And uh, actually, the those rollers would go right by my door. If I wanted to leave the house while they were there, I literally had to crawl under those rollers to get out of my uh, 
apartment, $105 a month, $52.50 each. And there were times we had trouble meeting that rent. Can you believe that? Um, I remember uh, having a lot of chunky soup, pancakes, you know, the kind you, all you need is water. But this was this was the 1970s. Uh, I was, you know, doing uh, uh, aluminum siding, working with this guy. But sometimes we, we didn't have work. Sometimes we didn't have money. So that's what happened. So anyway, um, that that's, that's what I was uh, doing. So I was always digging in, looking for truth. And it was just, there was a little... Uh, storefront uh, place around the corner i remember walking by and it said um christian science reading room and it, i said oh that look, looks interesting i i saw a book in the window so i went up there looked looked at that book uh and it said um science and health with the key to the scriptures by mary baker uh, 80 uh, or eddie however it's pronounced and I, I, you know, I'm looking at this thing in the window and I looked, I didn't realize it was an old lady <laughs> looking at me from inside. So I went in and I bought the book, uh, it, you know, because I was hungry. I, I didn't even know what I was buying. I saw scriptures. I said, you know, oh, this looks interesting. You know, I remember, though, after I bought that book, I, I only went through a few chapters. And um, after like the third or fourth chapter, I couldn't read anymore. I don't know what it was. It was like a mental block. And I said, I, I found it interesting. I said, boy, I cannot even go past this chapter. I wonder why. It was like an odd thing. But now as I look back, I believe it was the Lord that stopped me. You know, that's Christian science. It's not, uh, it's not biblically based, folks. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So during that time, during the 70s, I had a desire to know the truth. You know, during that time in the 70s, I certainly did my share of drinking, mostly on the weekends. And I remember one night, and it was late 1980, December 6th, actually. Actually, it was December 5th. Um, and I was drinking at a club on the uh, north shore of Long Island. And around midnight, you know, I was going to go home. But then I decided, you know, I don't want to go home. Uh, so I decided to go to a, a, a nightclub on the south shore of Long Island. I, I remember, I was tired, but I just, I wanted to get my money's worth out of the weekend. And um, I ended up going to the south shore to, uh, to a club, and that's where I ended up meeting my wife, Kathy. And I know uh, the date because uh, I stayed there till uh, f 4 o'clock in the morning. That was December 6th. That's why uh, I remember the date. How do I remember? Because there was a, a parking ticket waiting for me on the windshield because uh, because the sign said no parking on the street after 4 a.m. So this was after 4 o'clock in the morning. But that was my lifestyle, folks. The, you know, it was almost like normal. <laughs> if you were young, this is what you did uh, for a lot of people. You know, the weekend comes and you, you go out and you might go to a club here, a club, do you drink, party, hardy, that was it. Uh, long story short, Kathy and I got married uh, six months later, you know, uh, seven months later, July 1981. But that, that you see, the desire, uh, the search for truth, it never ended. I was still searching for the truth. You know, I remember, uh, I think it was in the Daily News, I read about a, a free seminar. It had to do with mind control and how to improve your your mind and how to improve your memory and, I, and that was right up my alley I said yeah this sounds good uh, let's go it was free let's go why don't we take so um it was very close by so we took a ride over there and uh, I remember when we got in there uh th the teacher was talking about relaxation and emptying your mind and visualization techniques and all of this stuff. So you keep in mind, I went there because, you know, I says, yeah, improve your memory. I says, yeah, you know, I forget a lot of things, you know, maybe this would be good for me, you know. So uh, anyway, just as the, the teacher's about to go into visualization mode, um, I remember him saying, you know, what's today? He forgot what day it was. And, and that hit my funny bone because I was there to improve my memory. And I, I, I burst out laughing to my, you know, I just couldn't hold it in. And, and, and the more I tried to stop laughing, the more I laughed, and 
my wife, you know, she started laughing too, and the teachers saw it. But anyway, long story short, I never, I never got into that visualization thing because I was laughing. I look back on it again. I says, it looks like the Lord uh, kept me from uh, doing that emptying in your mind. You got to be careful with this stuff, folks, because when you do things like this, you can open your mind to the occult. Oh yes, you can, and and. Uh, you know, I, I didn't realize that at the time, but now as a Christian, now as a person who's been born again of the Spirit, this I understand very well. So uh, I do believe that it was the Lord who was uh, protecting me at the time. So during the uh, mid-1980s, you know, Kathy and I, we became aware of what is known as the Catholic charismatic movement or the sometimes it's called the catholic charismatic renewal and uh, this was a mass it was a little livelier i should say a lot livelier uh, than than what went on in a, a normal catholic setting like a, a roman catholic mass and um at these charismatic masses as i said it was uh, the songs uh similar in a way to that uh, you might find in a pentecostal type of uh, Christian church. So uh, we we attended during that time what is known as Catholic Charismatic Healing Masses, okay? And these were packed, you know, with, uh, usually every pew was filled to the hilt with with people. And, and sometimes those things went on for two to three hours because people would be lined up uh, down the aisles uh, waiting to uh, get to the front altar. And, and they used to be like... Uh, lined up like in a semicircle, and um, it be, might, might be like 20 people up there at a time. And there was one particular Roman Catholic priest uh, who did these, would, uh, people were say, uh, saying that miracles were happening and stuff like that. But it was a regular Catholic Mass, and people uh, very often, if they're the main part of the Mass, uh, you know, the Eucharist, uh, after that, they, they would be saying uh, rosaries throughout the entire thing, the rest of the service when people would be lining up. As I said, it could go on for hours. You know, you'd you'd hear Hail Mary uh, prayers being prayed over and over again. And I remember, you know, sometimes there'd be so many people there, you know, the priest, I guess he had helper priests that, that would be working with him, but I, I knew he was the main guy, you know, the main man. And I used to, as we were going up the aisle, I, I found myself crossing over over from side to side because I figured if I get up there and, and I'd be watching him in a semicircle circle to see which part of the altar he would be in. I mean, it sounds sick now, but that's what I did. So anyway, uh, during that time, uh, as we were part of a couple of uh, charismatic prayer groups at a couple of different parishes in the area, um, we became aware, people told us within that uh, movement about Medjugorje, uh, where there was uh, Marian apparitions taking place. If you don't know about this stuff, that's the appearance where they say Mary is uh, miraculously appearing. That's that's what's known as an apparition. So we became uh, aware of this, and they told us all the things that were happening, that Mary was appearing, I think it was on the 25th of every month, and uh, some of the people we spoke to, they had gone over there and they told us stories about uh, their rosary beads, the chain that held the beads would uh, change from silver to gold color. And this was, we were intrigued by this. We were, we were just like, whoa, this is awesome stuff, you know? So we, we got sucked into that type of thing. We actually never went to Medjugorje, but, you know, we were telling others about it. We we purchased videos and what have you. We'd be handing out leaflets, even on the street uh, with all the messages of, of the Virgin Mary uh, and this is what she says and this is what she tells you what to do and so uh, this went on for quite a while we were in that uh, I guess the charismatic part of that uh, uh, Catholic Church for several years I would think two to three years it's hard I, I don't remember exactly uh, but um, during that same time, you know, uh, we became aware of, uh, of a church in Manhattan. Uh, we went to uh, visit a, a, a Pentecostal, a non-denominational church. We heard, we, uh, we heard about the uh, preaching of a man. In fact, there was a book by, by, the, uh, by the name of The Cross and the Switchblade, David Wilkerson. So we actually started going to that church. We um, 
this is where we heard the word of God preached. It was, it, it, it was preached in a the theater. Uh, it was actually on 40th Street, the Needle Lander Theater. They eventually switched to um, the theater in uh, the Mark Hellagent Theater. This is where uh, the name of the church was Times Square Church. So this is where, you know, we, we became aware of that church uh, from other people. I guess they must have told us about the book. Uh, we didn't even know about Christian bookstores, believe it or not. I, we might have ordered it a different way in a regular bookstore or something. Can't remember exactly. But we heard the word of God. We heard the preaching. And, and, and you see, this is what I want to show you, folks. It's the word of God that sets the captive free. So we, we were actually, we'd go to, uh, sometimes we'd go to Mass in the morning and we'd go to uh, this church at night. And uh, this is what happened. Uh, you know, the Bible says here in John 5 and 24 and 25, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. And it's very interesting what, what the Lord said there. He says, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead, we were dead, we were spiritually dead in our sins. I was dead, okay? And, and, and it says, you're going to hear the, you're going to hear the word, okay? He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me, okay, has everlasting life. So this started going in, folks. This is the word of God. This is the way the word works, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what I want you to see. The hours coming now is the word goes forth, the, the seed of the word of God is sown, and it goes into the heart, and this is how people get saved. Jesus said in John 16 and 13, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Listen to that. So Jesus said the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit, folks. He says he will guide you into all truth, okay? Now keep in mind, uh, you're listening to a man here. Remember I says I, I was searching books for years, ladies and gentlemen, book after book after book after book. But now the here's Jesus saying the spirit of truth. He's going to come and guide you into all truth. This is what I was looking for, okay? Okay. So John 6, 63, Jesus said, It is the spirit that quickeneth or makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Glory to God. So, folks, it's the word of God. You know, this book, uh, you know, as the Lord was bringing me out of deception, I, I used to be reading the Word, and I said, this book is alive. You know, I, I, I didn't realize what was happening to me. You know, the Spirit of God was taking the Word and then anointing it, anointing the Word to my heart, and it was coming alive. I was like, whoa. You know, I was searching. Remember, I was searching for the truth. So um, th this is what went on. Um, during that period, uh, folks, and you got to realize we're, we're, you know, <laughs> we're, we're coming out from, from, from a system of sacramentalism and Hail Marys, you know, I'd be hearing people praying, oh, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you know, and I'd be there, you know, hmm, all I know is Hail Mary and Our Father, you know, prayers that I used to pray by rote, you know, so anyway, Kathy, you know, during this time, she, um, she met a woman, and she started telling her about these apparitions over there in Medjugorje. And, and the lady quoted a scripture to her. And um, I believe it was this one, 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, that troubled Kathy. You know, she prayed and said, Lord, show me the truth. And she did pray that way. She prayed with an open Bible, folks. And uh, the Lord just started showing uh, her the scriptures. So, so she, she'd be seeing these uh, messages of Mary from Medjugorje and then lining it next to the scriptures. And the Lord just uh, opened her eyes. She said it was like 
as if the Holy Ghost took a yellow highlighting pen and, 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 and showed her all the lies that were coming forth from these apparitions of Medjugorje. You know, uh, there, there were several visionaries. Keep in mind that this was um, during the 80s. But these uh, apparitions, by the way, they're still going on. And uh, I remember the, uh, the the visionaries from watching these videos, you know, it's almost like you, f you felt like you almost knew these young uh, men and women. And um, they, we'd be watching these videos and they, something would come into the room. You didn't see it, but they did. And they would slam themselves on the floor and they'd be looking and you'd, you'd see the gaze of their eyes. And, and we were like, whoa, this is unbelievable. So So this was... You know, we didn't realize, folks, at the time, we were totally deceived. No question about it. So uh, the, the, the thing I want to stress to you, ladies and gentlemen, that it is the Word of God that brings you out. You see, God takes the Word, and, and, and it's the truth that sets us free. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, you know, I can remember the day when the Lord lifted the uh, veil of deception that covered my eyes, my spiritual eyes. You know, I was reading the Gospel of John, folks, and um, as I said, the, the words, it seemed as if they were jumping off the page at me and what you know I used to have a head knowledge you know I did not know I knew a lot about Jesus but I did not know Jesus you can know a lot about a person you can know a lot about a uh, an actor or a president or but but not know them because you read about them in a paper or something but you don't know them you know about them and that's the way it was with me I knew about Jesus uh, I remember growing up when you went to uh, grammar school whenever you had an assignment to do Always at the top of the page, you had to write J-M-J -J and then underline it, those three letters. What did it stand for? Jesus, Mary, Joseph. So Jesus was just one of the crowd. <laughs> That's the way it was for me, okay? I knew nothing about the power of God. I knew nothing about the deity of Jesus Christ. So, so this is what it means, folks, to come out of deception. It's exactly uh, what happened uh, to me, folks. Born again of the Spirit, uh, John 3, 6 to 8. This is what Jesus said. He, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth or wishes, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Don't miss that. So is every one that is born of the spirit of the spirit you know growing up as a Catholic, we were taught you're born again when you're baptized as an infant. Not true. I was baptized as an infant, folks. I'm telling you, I was not born again of the Spirit until I was 36 years old. Glory to God. And I thank God uh, for his mercy uh, toward me. So, you know, when Kathy and I, we, we researched uh, the messages from Medjugorje, and uh, we saw, obviously, it, uh, it, it was not of the Lord. And what we did naturally, we started investigating the other apparitions such as uh, Fatima and Lourdes and Guadalupe. And there were others too. I used to buy books just to say uh, the error. And, and, and obviously the conclusion you come to, folks, they're all demonic. You know, I know there are Roman Catholics that I know are going to be listening to this and uh, maybe even cursing me out. But I have to tell you the truth. It's not of the Lord. I speak the truth here. I, I make no apology for what I'm saying here today. Uh, they, they are all demonic. And, and it's the spirit of the living God that showed me that. You know, when I was born again, folks, and, and I came out of that darkness, let me tell you something. It absolutely uh, floored me. It sh I was shell-shocked on the inside. I couldn't believe it, actually, that the wickedness of Satan and deceiving souls, because I was one of them. And I knew that that, <laughs> that all the other people that I knew, uh, that, that, what Roman Catholics said, were just as deceived as I, as I was, folks. When I was born again of the Spirit, folks, 
there was no question about it. I knew there was a heaven. I knew there was a hell. I knew purgatory was a total fraud from the get-go. That I knew. How did I know it? By the Spirit of God. And I also knew, folks, that the majority of people are on the broad road to destruction. That means they're going to hell. I knew that. I'm not trying to be dramatic here. That is the truth. That was like instant revelation. And I also knew that I would have been one of them had not the Lord opened my eyes. That is the truth, folks. And that, you know, in fact, that's why I'm doing this today. I want you to come out of deception uh, because you have an enemy, the enemy of your soul. Listen to the second Corinthians chapter four, verses three and four. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, you know, the devil, folks, he's known as the God of this world. He's a professional blinder of minds. What do I mean by that? He will keep your mind darken so that you do not understand the word of God. You know, when Jesus uh, told the parable uh, of the sower, he spoke about uh, the sower who sowed the seed. And, and when he was asked to explain it, he said, the seed is the word of God. And one of the types of heart, you know, it was, it was, it was the heart that was hardened and, and, and the seed was sown. And he said, the devil comes and steals the word out of the heart. So that's why I stress the Word of God, folks, over and over. That's why I'm putting the Scriptures inside this testimony. I'm structuring it so that you may know the truth, ladies and gentlemen, and the truth will set you free. Satan does not want you to hear what you are hearing right now. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 says this, 11 and 12, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the methods of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh yes, you know, there's a battle, folks. There's a battle raging uh, for your soul, you know, young person, young man, young woman, uh, listen to me. Uh, what I'm speaking to you today, this is what you're looking for. You don't have to become part of a movement. You know, many people, especially young people, you, you're in the world and you want to make your life count. But there's something inside. You just say it ain't right. You're looking for something. You don't even know what you're looking for. I remember that's how we used to think myself. I'm here. I have the answer. Christ is the answer. This is what you are looking for. Young or old, this is what you are looking for. Take, let me save you years of trouble. All of those books, all of those years, all of that searching that I did, let me save you some time here. It's, 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 it's in the Word of God. It's all about Jesus Christ, folks. You must be born again. He's the answer. You need the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So, you know, as a new Christian, folks, I now believe what Peter said. I was part of the priesthood of believers, 1 Peter 2 and 9. And that represents, that includes people from every nation in this world on planet Earth, folks. And, you know, I knew I didn't need the Catholic Mass anymore. You know, they teach uh, that the Catholic Mass satisfies the justice of God for the sins committed against him. That's what I grew up with in a Baltimore catechism. Not true. The price has been paid in full. Jesus cried out, it is finished in John 19 uh, and 30. Peter himself said this, for Christ also hath once, I repeat, once, so I got to repeat it once more, hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened or made alive by the Spirit. Peter knew the deal, folks. He knew he, Christ paid the price in full. He suffered once. It doesn't have to be repeated every day on Roman Catholic altars. You're not bringing Christ back down from heaven, folks, to be offered again on a Roman Catholic altar. Oh, folks, that's heresy. I say that in love. That's heresy. Listen to 
to a former Catholic like myself. That's heresy. So I believe what the Apostle Paul spoke. You know, this is what happened. As I'm reading the Word of God, the truth is setting me free. Romans 5, 8, and 9, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. That's awesome, folks. I didn't, I didn't even know this stuff existed, these words. God commended his love. Love? Wow, that's awesome. I, I thought I was going to purgatory. Love. God's love toward us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What does it tell me here? It says, I'm justified. I'm justified by his blood. I'm saved from wrath through him. Hear me now, folks. You know, you, you can read the newspaper, you can read about court cases, and, and you can see the rich people, the famous people, get, they, they, they get these high-priced lawyers, and, you know, some of them are able to finagle the, the way they deal with the law and get these people off, and sometimes you're saying, how'd this guy ever get off? My, oh, my. Let me tell you something, folks. There's not a high-priced lawyer in this world that will be able to redeem your soul on the Day of Judgment it, there's, there's only one way, folks, and it's through Christ. It is by the blood that he shed. There's only one way be, to be justified before the righteous, perfect, and eternal judge, and it's only the blood of Jesus Christ. That's correct. No high-priced lawyer, folks. I don't care how rich you are. It ain't going to work. Nothing like that will work on the day of judgment. You need Christ. This is why he came into the world. So I knew, folks, you know, the Catholic Church uh, and the Catholic Mass, that was not the way to go. Leviticus 17 and 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. You know, a big part of, of Roman Catholicism, folks, is Mary. How many people pray the rosary? Those are prayers to Mary. The majority are prayers to Mary. A couple of our fathers, glory be, thrown in here. <laughs> but it's all Hail Mary, folks. And uh, that's what I did for years. Years. Then you read the Bible. This is how the truth sets you free. Luke 1, 46 and 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary said that only sinners need a Savior. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Only one. Mary is not included. So uh, that's something for you to know. You can read the book of Acts for yourself, verses 13 and 14. You'll find them in the upper room. You'll see Mary praying along with the others, okay? But they're not praying to her. She was just one of the the crowd uh, that was listed there. She wasn't exalted above them. She was just a believer, just like every one of the others uh, that were there. Another thing that uh, really got our attention was um, the fact that the Ten Commandments that were found in the Roman Catholic Catechism were different than what I read in the Bible. Let me read to you Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6. Regarding graven images, those are statues. I mean, folks, if, you, if you're Catholic, even if you're not Catholic, you know I'm telling you the truth. Those churches are filled with idols, filled with graven images. And I could see why they wouldn't want this in the Catechism. Uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. I said, you know, I, I never heard that before. Because in the Catholic, uh, you know, the Baltimore Catechism, folks, that I grew up with, and, you know, a lot of Catholics, you know, after they get saved, tell me the same thing. Our, the second command we learned was, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So you say, wait a second. If they take a, a commandment out, 
there'd be only nine. So how could they have ten commandments? Well, if you take a look at uh, the ninth and tenth commandments in the Baltimore Catechism, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. And then number ten, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. You'll say, you find that on page uh, 100, item number 195 in that catechism. So here's what happened. Here's what they did. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17, this is what it says. One verse. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. So the whole verse is dealing with covetousness. So what the Church of Rome did, they took that verse and chopped it in half. Can you believe this? And that's how they made that made up for the one that they pulled out. Because if you look at that uh, second commandment, folks, uh, Exodus chapter 20, that's three separate verses that deal specifically with graven images, I, idols. I mean, the Lord put that in there for a reason. He's a jealous God. He hates false gods. He hates that type of thing. And, and that'll give you a little understanding, folks, uh, as to why uh, you don't see that in uh, their catechism. So that was a big eye-opener, you know, for me. And, you know, thank God, shortly before I got saved, you know, I was going to build my own little altar. I wanted my own little Mary statue, and I wanted to have, you know, my own little private time with her, with Mary. I wanted to pray my rosary and so on and so forth. You know, I went out, to, it's funny, I went out to that same mall looking, looking for um, a statue. But I started looking at the prices, and I said, you know, you got to be kidding me, the prices of these things. And, and, and that was, uh, even even the one, just a plain white statue without the blue and the the colors of Mary, uh, where I said, I can't do this, too much money. So, and then shortly thereafter, I got saved. That was the mercy of God. So, uh, that's what you're dealing with, folks. Um, and the Bible says this, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, of devil, devils. So, or doctrines of demons is, is another way to uh, to put it. So, you know, after we got saved and the Lord brought us out and uh, showed us we were in deception, we, we that was it. We left, you know, in fact, we, we spoke to people in that, uh, the charismatic prayer group that we were praying with, uh, and we told them, you know, we're not coming back anymore. And we told them, you know, all about the Mary. You know, when we started telling them about Mary, uh, they didn't want to hear it, you know. Uh, they were polite, you know, from some precious souls, believe me. Uh, when I tell you that, we love these people. But uh, when we, we said, no, we can't do this anymore. Because, you see, we dug into the Word of God, folks. And the truth set us free. So when we left that group, you know, I remember one of them mailed us a... a a letter, you know, from a newspaper article, how the, the Eucharistic host turned into real flesh and blood. And we were like, ooh, <laughs> you know, thank God, thank God that it was the Word of God. It was so uh, deep in us at that point we, that the Lord kept us from that deception. But you see, the enemy, folks, uh, will seek to bring you back. He will seek to deceive you. You know, I read stories about people who declare that they were born again Protestants and then they go back to the Catholic Church or they say, they say the Lord uh, told them to go there. Hear me now. That's a lie. I'm telling you, uh, hear it from a former Roman Catholic. The Spirit of God is not going to direct you to go back to a system that preaches a counterfeit soul damning gospel. The Bible makes it clear there's a curse on a false gospel. Look at Galatians uh, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. It's a curse upon the false gospel. So I, I assure you, folks, that people are deceived, uh, and you're hearing it from a uh, former Roman Catholic. So it is the Spirit of God, ladies and gentlemen, who brought me out. It's the Spirit of truth prophesying through the Apostle Paul. Listen to what he said. He said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. It's the Spirit of the living God said that in the latter times, we're truly, folks, we are at the edge, I believe, uh, the edge of uh, the end of this world. I'll, put, I'll tell you flat out, folks, when you see what is going on, it's mind-boggling. 
Uh, so the seducing spirits, the dotsons of devils, it's, it's going on, folks, right now. You know, many pastors, many famous pastors walking under the disguise of love, talking about the unity with the Catholics. Hear me now. Don't buy it. Don't jump in with it, folks. Run from it. You're hearing it from a former Roman Catholic. I don't care what people are telling you. Even regarding uh, the, the charismatic renewal, uh, I, I've told that story before about... Um, uh, I, we met a lady. In fact, it was in that same church that I, I told you about. A lady who uh, hooked up with a, a, some uh, Roman Catholic charismatic people. And I, I remembered, I said to her, I said, be careful, sister. They'll have you praying the rosary before long. And the woman looked at me and she says, I feel sick. I feel sick. They already have me praying the rosary. This is what I'm talking about, folks. It's seduction. It's seduction. They're being seduced. People are being seduced by these spirits, folks. Seducing spirits. That's why it's in the Bible. It's put here for that very reason. Doctrines of devils. Folks, if the Roman Catholic Church is, is, is not preaching doctrines of devils, then no church is. They are preaching doctrines of devils. Counterfeit gospel. Just the teaching on the Roman Catholic Mass that that satisfies God's justice is the worst doctrine in the world as far as I'm concerned and people are joining in unity with this church. So hear me, I don't care how famous a pastor is, don't fall for it. Listen to what uh, the Apostle Paul says here 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. Listen, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick or the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. My, oh my, perfect description for what is happening in the world today. They will not endure sound doctrine. They'll be turned away. That's exactly what's going on, folks. Hear me today, folks. There is a battle for your soul. There's a battle for your soul going on. Satan absolutely hates the truth, which is found in the Word of God. Why? Because it exposes him for what he is. That's right. Exposes him for what he is. Listen to what Peter said, folks. First uh, Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That's heavy-duty stuff, folks. That's Peter talking about the devil as a roaring lion. You've seen those animal documentaries. There'll be a lion or a, a tiger or a cheetah. Uh, uh, they stalk. They stalk. To, to sometimes it'll be a deer or another animal and and you'll see them they 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 arch their back and they you'll see them be be hiding behind the tall blades of grass you don't even know they're there and they'll be filming them and they're ready to pounce and this is the description that Peter gave of the devil he says he's this is how he is he's he's walking about he's seeking whom he may devour remember what the lord told peter peter Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He wants to run you through the mill, folks. And, and if, that warning, by the way, was to Peter. But let me tell you something. You, if you're a Christian, you've been born again of the Spirit. That warning's for, for me and it's for you. Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. 
He wants to put you through the ringer, folks. <laughs> Trust me. If you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. You will go through things. Sometimes you feel like you're losing your mind because he will attack your mind, folks. He goes after you. He's not concerned about those in the world. You see, you turn on your televisions. That you say, look, look what's going on around the world. He's already got everybody in the, in the headlock. And it's only the gospel of Jesus Christ that's going to deliver those poor souls, deceive souls, people on the way to hell. Oh, yes. So uh, let me close it out with this scripture here, folks. 1 Timothy 1, 12 to 16, spoken by the apostle Paul. He says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. You know, I'm always blessed by, um, by the Apostle Paul. I'll tell you why. Now think about this guy. He was a tyrant. This is all found in the Word of God, by the way, folks. Read the book of Acts. You'll, you'll learn about this man. He was a uh, severe persecutor of Christians consented unto the death of many of those Christians. He was a tyrant. He was, a, he was not a nice person. He went after Christians, hated them. And um, one day he, was, uh, he actually got some warrants to bring some more in on his way to Damascus and then a, a bright light from heaven who just happened to go by the name of Jesus Christ uh, spoke to him and dealt with him and, and saved that man's soul. And he's the same one who just wrote what I just read to you folks. He called himself the chief of sinners. That man knew that he deserved the lowest part of hell. There's no question about it. He knew he deserved hell. And, and look at what God showed him mercy. So the word for you today, folks, is no matter who you are, uh, again, the young people hear me now, don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. I'm telling you what you're looking for is you're hearing it today. You need Christ. You need to be saved. You're, you're in sin. You're, you're living in sin right now. With, without Christ, your sins, you'll die in your sins. That goes for Jewish or Gentile. If you don't believe in him, you will die in your sins. You will end up in hell. No question about it. That's the love of God that I'm telling you that. You've probably never heard that before. You will die in your sins without Jesus Christ. You don't have to be hooked up with any type of movement. Get right with God. Uh, nobody will be holding your hand on judgment days between you and God. Don't ever forget that. Your walk is before the Lord, okay? So, so the opportunity uh, for salvation is here today. You're hearing this for a reason. And the Bible makes it clear, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So recognize you are a sinner. I was dead in my sins, folks. I was uh, uh, skyrocketing toward hell. Uh, and I can agree with Paul. I, I call myself the chief of sinners. I was on a pair of rollerblades. Hear <laughs> me now. On my way to hell. And I can, I can, I can laugh now, folks, because uh, it's the joy of the Lord, the mercy of God, folks, that that He rescued me. And you know, my wife, we we talk about it all the time. How did we ever come out? How did we ever get saved? How did we ever get saved? When you when you see, when the Lord lifts that veil, folks. When the Lord lifts that veil, that veil of deception, perhaps you were not even involved uh, with uh, a religion or anything like that. But if you don't know the Lord, you're still deceived. You need to come out of that deception. And it's your sin that separates you from God. That's what keeps that veil of deception. That's how Satan blinds the mind. He's the God of this world. He'll keep entertaining you until you go into hell, <laughs> until you leave this world. So I'm going to leave it there, folks. This is what I uh, wanted to do today. I felt the Lord uh, actually been telling me, testify. That's my testimony. I'm telling you the truth. 
God will save you. If he could save me, a wretch like me, if he could save me, he can save you. Be blessed.